Welcome to Electron Online. Our second example has two objects starting from rest, 88 meters apart, traveling towards each other, with the left one accelerating at 0.3 meters per second square, and one on the right with an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second square. And the question is, where will they meet? So, what we can say is that they'll travel the same amount of time, so we know that time for the first one will be equal to time for the second one, but since they're accelerating, we're probably going to need this particular equation. So let's start with uh, x, or distance traveled, is equal to x of naught plus v initial times t plus one half a t squared. And notice that if we assume that they have not traveled any distance at time equals zero, which is a correct assumption, we can call this equal to zero. There's no initial velocity, so that is equal to zero. So the distance traveled for each will be equal to one half a times t squared. And notice that a is known and t, well, that will be unknown, but it will be at least the same time for both. So what we can say here is, is that the distance traveled by the first object plus the distance traveled by the second object will add up to a total of 88 meters because when they meet, they will together have traveled a total distance of 88 meters. And so distance one can be written to be one half a t squared. So we have one half times a one t squared plus distance two is one half a two t squared equals to 88. And since a1 and a2 are known, the only unknown in this equation will be time, and so we can solve this equation for time. So let's plug in what we have here for a1 and a2. So we have, uh, well, first I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the 1 halves. So a1 t squared plus a2 t squared is equal to double that, would be 176. Now we plug in some values here, so we have 0. Uh, 3 for the first one times t squared plus 0 0.2 t squared is equal to 176. Add these together, we have 0 0.5 t squared equals 176. And multiplying both sides by 2 again to get rid of the 1 half, that gives us t squared is equal to double this. Well, that would be um, 352, 352. And so t will be equal to the square root of 352. Let's see, 340, yep, that's correct. So with a calculator, let's find out what that is equal to. 352, take the square root. The time will be 18.7 seconds. So t is equal to 18.76 seconds, so two decimal places. So now that we have the time, we can now figure out the distance traveled by each of the two. So we can say distance one, so distance 1 is equal to 1 half, the acceleration, a1 would be 0 0.3, and time would be 18.76 quantity squared. So when we square that, we get 352 times 0.3 and times 0.5, and we get 52.8 meters. And of course, distance 2 will be 88 minus that. So distance 2 will be, make that a minus, plus 88, will be 35.2 meters. So you can see that if we start from this point right there, in this direction, so they'll meet past halfway from the left, and that would be a distance of 52.8 meters is the distance traveled by the first one, and 35.2 traveled by the second one. You may wonder, well, why didn't I use a negative 0.2 for the acceleration of object 2 since it's to the left, but if we're only talking about the magnitude of the acceleration, we don't have to worry about the negative signs. We can simply calculate the distance regardless which direction we're traveling. And so that's how it's done.